In this video, we're going to be replacing the idle air control valve here in this 3.1 liter GM engine. The idle air control valve is right here. We're also going to be performing a test as we take it out, keep it connected, turn the engine on, and we're going to see the idle air control valve move back and forth. We have the throttle body here with a throttle position sensor and the, the rocker arm with the throttle cables right there. We're going to remove this breather tube here that goes to the rear uh, valve cover just for uh, the video's sake. Now at this point some people may disconnect their negative battery terminal. However, we're going to need that power here later on in the video, so if you keep watching you'll find out why. I did not disconnect my negative battery terminal and I had no issues on startup. The IAC valve is connected to the throttle body with two torque bolts. They're a T25 and in order to connect the T25 to my ratchet I have a quarter inch drive here on a it's a pretty small ratchet I also have a U-joint little connection here for my ratchet set and it depends on the length of your IAC and everything involved you see it was kind of long there and the initial socket right there holding the T25 connecting to the ratchet is just long enough to be able to back it out so first off get the first one out and then when you get the second one out, you want to make sure that you don't drop it down in the engine bay where you have to go hunting for it. Make sure you have a handle on it because once it starts becoming loose, you don't want to drop it. So here is what the idle air control valve looks for this make and model of car. We have what they call the pindle right here in the center. And when you are driving, it expands all the way out and doesn't allow any air to go through. All the air goes through the throttle body. But when you're at idle, you have to have some air go through, otherwise you're going to stall out. So when this thing starts acting up, you're going to notice some maybe rough idle, maybe stalling out, which is exactly what my car was doing. So I was thinking maybe it was the oxygen sensors, maybe it was the catalytic converter, or that it was this idle air control valve. Now one of the things that I've learned working on cars is you try to do some of the easier things first to eliminate that to see if that's the problem or not. Now with the IAC valve you can either clean it or replace it. Now I cleaned my BMW IAC valve but I might be having problems with that again here in the future so you're probably better off just replacing it especially if it's a 20 year old car. Now with this IAC valve I believe it was probably broken in the first place with the battery connected and the electrical connector connected to the IC valve I turned the key just before the ignition and the pindle actually came out of the IC valve so I was not able to get it back in there successfully so I went out and bought another IAC valve now you can see that this one has the new rubber gasket I had to transfer the Torx bolts and with everything in place we can compare the old versus the new you can see as we took the old out the pindle length was a little bit longer than the new so we're gonna have some resetting to do now that you have your new IEC valve you wanna go ahead and replace it make sure you do clean the inside of the throttle body you don't have to torque this down to any specs just hand tighten it and then maybe tighten it another quarter to a half turn and then you should be good to go make sure you connect the electrical connector and replace the breather tube for the right valve cover. Once you do all this, at this point, you might want to disconnect the negative battery terminal for about 10 to 15 minutes and then reconnect it before you start it back up. Also, when you start it back up, you might want to go driving for a couple minutes at 40 miles an hour just to get the system to relearn the new idle air control valve. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you're going to be replacing your IAC valve anytime soon, go down to the comments and let me know what vehicle you're going to be replacing it on. I hope you enjoyed that. This is Auto Odometer. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.